Resident Evil Village, my most anticipated PSVR 2 launch title. So, did it live up to the hype? Yeah, it did. Oh my god. You're still alive? This is so wild. Oh, that's not good. Resident Evil Village is a sequel to one of the scariest games I have ever played in my life, and that is Resident Evil 7, which was released on the original PSVR back in 2017. Now, Village is a little bit more on the action-adventure side, akin to more like Resident Evil 4. However, it is still chock full of scares and spooky moments that especially those who are sensitive to that kind of thing are going to feel. There's no end to them. <laughs> right off the bat, I was completely floored by how gorgeous this game looks. I mean, even in the main menu where it has you sitting out in the field, you can see all the mountains in the distance, the farmhouse, the castle, and then once you actually come over the mountaintop for the first time and you get a look at the entire village, oh my god. The biggest advantage it has over 7 is possibly the fact that it was designed completely from the ground up for these. The orbs, the PlayStation VR 2 sense controllers. It allows you to be able to grab weapons from your back, from your hip. There's manual reloading where you pop in the clip, you cock the guns. It feels good. And of course, it uses the haptics and adaptive triggers as well to just really enhance the gameplay experience. Let's go. Let's go. The story takes place well after the events of Resident Evil 7, and we are once again placed into the role as our favorite, faceless, hand-brutalized main protagonist, Ethan Winters. I was actually pleasantly surprised with the story in this game. I mean, look, I don't play Resident Evil games because of the story, but I think they did a wonderful job, and I dare I say, I actually had a little bit of an emotional connection to the characters that were in this. Speaking of characters, there are some very memorable ones in this game as well. Of course, there is the iconic Lady D, who is like 10 feet tall in VR. She is huge. Oh my god. Oh god. But I really enjoyed going through the castle and all the sections with her, and I really enjoyed a lot of the other characters from their designs to their voice acting to the boss fights, of course. Come on, tasty pipe bob. Ugh. Yes! Literally the last thing I had. <laughs> Got him. I love this game. <laughs> now, one of the things I would say is probably a knock on the game are that the cutscenes can be really janky. Rather than cutting to third person or cutting to a 2D cinema screen, they actually just leave you right there and they give you the ability to spin around and then the arms can become like disorientated real easily and it just presentation wise doesn't always look great. So Resident Evil Village is absolutely my favorite PlayStation VR 2 game right now. And that's saying a lot because there are some mind blowing games, whether you've heard of them or not. But this is a perfect example of a triple A hybrid title that we need to see more of. I'm gonna give Resident Evil Village a 9.3. It is just a wonderful action adventure that's also scary and fun as hell, and it is just such a blast to play. I love how over the top it is at times, but it's just so well-crafted, well-written, well-designed, and I love the way they executed this. There's even some VR mechanics that were very big surprise that I wasn't expecting that I thought worked really, really well. So guys, do you agree with me? What's your favorite PlayStation VR 2 game so far? And as always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.